is we've now finished installing all of our hardware, but we're not finished yet. Before we can close it up, we need to connect all of the cables inside the computer, and that means beginning with the cables that allow the power button, reset button, and all the other stuff on the front panel to work. This is when you want to pull out your motherboard manual, or in the case of our motherboard, a quick start guide that will show you exactly how those front panel connectors work inside your computer. This right here is the front panel header on the motherboard. That's where we're going to connect the wires that lead to the power button, the reset button, and so on. And these are the cables you'll attach to that header. This is the power LED header to which we'll connect the wire for the power LED on the case's front panel. Now we're going to install the hard drive LED header on the appropriate pins. Now I'm going to plug in the power switch wire onto the header here. And last, but certainly not least, the reset button wire. These are the USB connectors that give us USB access on the top of our case. In order to actually get the ports on the case to work, we need to plug these into the motherboard, and there's a special header in here for doing just that. The top of our case also has an eSATA, or external SATA port, for connecting external hard drives. And to use that, like the USB cable, we need to connect it to the motherboard using this cable here. We just plug it into any available SATA hard drive port, and this one will do nicely. This is our Azalea audio connector, which will give us access to our headphones and microphone jack up here at the top of the computer. This is a high-definition audio cable, and you need to be very careful about this. You plug it into the right place, because if you don't, problems can result. Trust me on this. I've seen it firsthand. It's not pretty. Here's how to do it the right way. We're going to plug the connector into the yellow header here, like so. These four-pin Molex connectors come directly from the power supply. Yes, it is time to actually energize the computer. Before the exhaust fan here can cool anything, we need to give it power. And we do that with this Molex connector, which we are going to plug into this other Molex connector right here. Now we'll do the same thing for the front intake fan. These three cables supply the motherboard with power. On some power supplies, you'll find a 24-pin connector. Here we have one 20-pin connector and one 4-pin connector that'll be right next to each other when we plug them in. And we have another 4-pin power connector, and all of these need to be plugged into the motherboard. It's probably easiest to install the two power connectors here one at a time. So we're going to start with the 4-pin one, put it over here on the left until it clicks. Then for the 20 pin one, we do exactly the same thing. Make sure they're secure, and they are. Now we're going to plug the other 4 pin one in over here. For connecting the floppy drive slash card reader to the motherboard, we're going to use this rounded cable, which will certainly make airflow a lot easier inside the case and will make things a lot less crowded and more convenient too. The floppy cable connects right at the back of the drive here. And the other end plugs into the floppy header on the motherboard, which happens to be right near the power socket. Since the floppy drive is also a card reader, we need to hook up the card reader part of the drive. We do that with a USB connector, which we plug into a USB header on the motherboard. For connecting the optical drives to the motherboard, we use a cable that's very similar to the floppy cable, except on this end, it has two connectors, and on this end, it has the same one connector, so we can connect both of the optical drives at the same time. The cable is keyed so that it'll only fit in one way. Just press it in the same way you did with the floppy cable. Oops. Just like that. And then we plug the other end into the motherboard. Now that we have all the cables on this side of the motherboard connected, we need to put the hard drive cage back in, and that's very easy to do. 
it slides in very simply and will click when it's in place. Serial ATA or SATA cables like this one connect your hard drive to the motherboard. The SATA cable connects to that connector right there. The other end plugs into the motherboard right where we plugged in the external SATA cable for the top panel before and then you plug in the other cable the same way. We are almost finished. The last thing we have to do is give power to the five drives in our computer. We start with the floppy drive power connector, which is a small one like this. Then we move on to the one for the CD-ROM drives, which is the slightly larger version of that. And then the black one is for the SATA hard drives. Given the layout of our case, <laughs> the fact that we have to put the floppy drive power connector in there, it can be a little bit difficult to get in there, but it's keyed so it will only go in one way, which means it's hard to screw up. Let's try this out here. The cut corners of the power connectors for the CD-ROM drives go up. I'm going to give them a little bit of a push to get them in there, but they'll go pretty easily. The SATA power cable goes in very similarly to the SATA data cable. It can be just a little bit tricky trying to angle it in there, but it will go like so, and this one's a little bit easier, like so.